Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, today I wanted to talk about the importance of staying on the ground at the moment of impact. And the reason why I'm doing this video is a lot of times I watch people, you know, beginners, right? This is really a newbie video. I watch beginners uh, doing pal work and what I'll see is that at the moment of impact, one, at least one foot will be off the ground or sometimes I'll even see two feet off the ground. And what do I mean by that? So I'll see them come in, right? So as they strike, one foot still in the air and then it lands okay so that's bad you have very little control you're not really transferring um the force uh what you want is at the moment of impact right right you see how my foot and the blade uh made contact at the same time now this is regardless of whether i'm hitting a blade or i'm hitting a, a body okay so if i'm trying to beat the blade right so if i'm here I'm striking at the blade right and then thrusting through right so in both those instances right when I when I when I made contact with the blade foot was on the ground and when I thrust through again foot was on the ground at the moment of of, of impact um, and if you watch uh, race car driving you'll notice that with race car sports they pay a lot of attention to the tires of the car they're like constantly t uh, changing them uh, as they get worn out and, and the reason for that is because it doesn't matter how powerful the engine of a car is um, if the tires are worn out and you're not able to transfer that force to the ground through the tires you know you're not going to be able to push the car forward okay so all power all you know all power starts from the ground up so that's why when we strike okay we want to make sure that we have contact at the moment of impact okay whatever that is um, and th this applies to buckler as well so if I pull out a buckler you know same deal at the moment of impact okay at the moment of impact I want both feet on the ground um, uh, and same thing goes with rapier fencing okay so let's, let's put this down and we can actually learn a lot from rapier fencers uh, and fencers in general because they've been uh, you know they, they sort of have a continuing tradition um, but if, if you notice that when if, if they're fencing right they'll come out they'll extend the arm to basically clear a pathway and then when they strike their blade and their foot hit the ground at the same time okay so regardless whether they're looking to beat a blade and come in okay the blade and the foot hit the ground at the same time you'll never see them um, come in right with one foot in the air hit first and then the foot goes on the ground okay uh, that's also the reason why you'll see fencers make small steps right so they fencers make small steps like this so they can spend as much time on the ground as possible because if you're making big steps right your feet spend more time in the air uh, if you're making small steps right because you now you can cover a lot of ground just by moving your feet really fast now of course if you're out of range yeah you can make larger steps but when you come into range you want to make small steps um same thing would apply with let's say with long sword right so if, once i come into range you know you know i can bait the person but at the moment that i strike both feet have to be at, at the ground at the moment of impact so i can transfer uh that force so um this is one of the important things to really focus on because a lot of times people focus on a lot of the uh, more sophisticated cuts, um, but if your if your feet are not on the ground at the moment of the impact, you, you're not gonna you know even if you're if the cut looks right, well you know it's not going to transfer the force the way it's supposed to transfer it. Um, now as far as the historical manuals, they really don't talk to us a lot about footwork. Uh, in many cases, they really don't even show us the feet. So uh, when we're trying to recreate um, you know historical uh, fencing. We have to kind of piece these things together based on what we're able to see, but we also have to use our logic, uh, you know, um, as far as you know how the human body works. Um, also, you know, we also bring in some um, uh, some knowledge from other martial arts, you know, and the same thing goes with boxing, right? So if you've got a boxer, right? So if we're boxing, the same thing. At the moment of impact, you know, your feet are on the ground. You'll never see a, a boxer throw a shot while one foot's in the air now let me not say never because sometimes weird things happen so for example a lot of times uh, the two two times that um i might make i might make a strike when a foot's in the air um one is 
you know, I'm throwing a shot. So as I'm initiating a shot, somebody moves into me while in, I'm in the middle of a shot. So, you know, that's a situation where, yeah, it's going to happen. I'm going to, um, you know, my blade is going to either, you know, hit their body or hit their sword while maybe one foot is in the air. But again, by making those smaller steps, we can minimize it. The other, the other thing is if somebody kind of charges at me and I'm just trying to get back, right? So I'm just kind of throwing the point out there, right? I'm throwing the long point out there. You know, that's another situation where I'm just trying to, you know, keep them back and I'm just throwing a blade out there, right? Um, and, you know, you know I, I might make contact while one foot's in the air, but uh, I never want to do it intentionally, right? You know, so anytime I, anytime I'm, you know, I'm, I know I'm going to hit somebody or I'm going to try and hit somebody, I want to do it with both feet on the ground. So that's one of the things that you want to practice on your pelt. Okay. You know, do it slow. Don't go fast. Uh, pelt work, in my opinion, shouldn't be done uh, fast unless you're specifically trying to develop a, that specific skill on that specific day. Most of the time when I do pelt work, I do it very slow, right? So, you know, I'll throw out a shot and basically I'll see what can I do from here. You know, I'll stop, go here, you know, maybe make an utahau, you know. So I'll, I'll do my, my pelt work slowly and kind of observe, you know, and kind of try to envision my opponent, try to envision what I can possibly do or what my opponent can possibly do. Um, so th that's how I use the pelt. Um, but as far as, uh, you know, if you're just starting out, that's one of the things that you want to concentrate on. When you come in, make sure that you're striking. When you strike, your foot is on the ground. Uh, thanks for watching. If you're not a member of the channel, subscribe. See you guys next time.